Right, this week's soapbox. Here we go. Um, I had been thinking about it a while, for, to be fair, and then someone's emailed me the question as well. So Richard Deering emailed it to me. Uh, I just watched this video and wondered what your opinion is on whether uh, huge aero surfaces are good for motor GP. So I don't know whether many of you watch motor GP, but it is starting to look like F1. I don't watch bike racing, and to be honest, yours is the only bike content I watch. It's not very good bike content, mate, so I would open your horizons there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but his view is, whilst engineering is very cool and interesting, it's gotten a little out of hand, but very interested in any formed opinion you have. I think it's got out of hand. They're hard to follow. So the first thing is, right, the primary thing to think about on everything to do with motorsport formula one have the same problem a any motorsport has the same problem it's keeping the bloody thing cool right so you've got to allow enough air into the bike to keep it cool versus it being drag uh, uh, this is why mercedes in f1 went for the no side pod revision with hamilton because they were trying to bring the aero profile down right <laughs> Then you kind of got to split it into two things. You get unsprung aero and you get sprung aero. So where you see the bikes with massive wings under where the headlight would be and big wings at the back of them, that's load you're putting through the suspension. So you've got to think about that then in all your suspension calculations and how the bike's going to react. Unsprung aero is where you see the little wings and vortices on the wheel or rather hung off the suspension or the swing arm on the wheel to try and help load the tire into the floor. Now that is ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to cheat grip. You're trying to generate more grip in whatever way you can. And that's the same in F1. That's why they take loads of corners without lifting because they generate so much downforce. So that's ultimately what they're trying to do. They're trying to increase grip so they can go faster. Now, the trend, it's broken in two. The Japanese factories are way behind the European factories. So you've got Honda and Yamaha are nowhere near the level of Ducati, uh, KTM, Aprilia, Gas Gas, which again is a subsidiary. But they've all been paid by in the past F1 teams to develop aero principles in their wind tunnels because of course F1 have limits on how much they can use their wind tunnel. So what they've done is they've gone to other manufacturers and asked them to do wind tunnel work. So that in turn has helped arm other manufacturers with aero IP. Then you've got like a Prilia have just taken on one of Red Bull's aerodynamicists. So now you've got F1 technology or F1 people going into Motor GP. So it is all moving along. Then when you start looking at aero and you start breaking it down really close, you get two sort of camps you get wings so ducati is very wing heavy where they've got big wings on the front and they've got big wings on the rear and then you start looking at aprilia and they they've gone down the diffuser route so aprilia suck the air out from under the back of the bike and up over the back wheel and up over the tail unit sorry under the tail unit to help draw the bike to the floor so a diffuser in an f1 car probably does 60 70 percent of the aero work whereas a wing pushes. So when you start looking at it like that, then that's why the back end of an Aprilia and the scoops in front of the Aprilia rear wheel and the scoops in behind the front wheel, they look completely different to um, the Ducatis. The hardest bit about it is the mushy bit that sits on the bike. <laughs> yeah, so if you went and designed a complete aero principle or aero package, around Jorge Martin on the Ducati, who is five foot five, 65 kilos, and puts his shoulder on the floor, and then you go and put top rack on the bike, who's six foot two, dangles himself everywhere, yeah? That's why we are not gonna see lads progress from, <laughs> uh, Graham's lad, Mikey. Uh, we will never see Mikey in MotoGP. And however much that breaks people's hearts, he will never go stock six, stock thousand, superbike, world supersport, world superbike, motor GP. He will never do that. Jake Dixon is currently in motor two and he cannot get into motor GP. 
and he's the top world championship rider we've got. Johnny Ray went from, and this was 10 years ago when he was on Honda, if not more, went from World of Superbikes to MotoGP, finished seventh and still didn't get a seat. So unless you are starting off on prototypes, you are never gonna get there. And that's why I don't like it. I don't like, I like the engineering side of it, but it's the same as F1. F1 is shit because no one can pass. And they, what is the point of, D, of DRS? So if you've got to turn off the technology, which is ultimately what DRS is, you're turning off the aero to allow another car to pass, no worries, I'll follow you for the next lap and I'll just get you back. Yeah. There's no, there's no race strategy in it. There's no last lap. When do you ever see in F1 a good race? And it's starting to get that way in Murder GP. The front tire temp now is so critical because of pressure. The variance in pressure is massive depending on whether you're on your own or whether you're following. And the second the pressure climbs, because temperature is directly related to heat, and the heat on the front tire goes through the roof, you lose grip and you fall off the back of the group. Ah, race over, may as well park the bike in the garage. Because you can't make it back up. These are the best in the world pushing their package as fast as it will go, yeah? So then when you start seeing big manufacturers throw in millions in the wind tunnel, making their bikes faster, it's, the engineer in me loves it, but the racer in me thinks, well, I got no chance. Yeah. So I get an opportunity and I get onto the back of Murder GP, you, you, you're not, you ain't got a chance. You, and that's the problem now, is when you start looking at them, even, well, this year now, Pramac get the 2023 bikes, or one of them gets a 23 bike, one of them gets a 24 bike, and then Ducati are already in 24. But if you go and look at Sepang Test now, they're carrying the aero vortices grids on the back of the bikes, like what F1 cars do to measure the aero off the back of the bike. So it's, it's just getting ridiculous. It is getting silly. I don't like it. World Superbikes is much better racing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, much better racing. So would racing. you almost compare that to how it was with F1 and touring cars? Yeah. Back in the day? Yeah, yeah. and nobody... I yeah. d the, right? Everybody sat at home has not got a fucking clue. Silverstone has not got a clue what a 126 and a 136 lap feels like on a telly. Yeah. Nobody knows, right? So I understand that the technology or the development is to push everything to go faster, but it costs money to go faster. But that removes then the racing. So like this, it's, it's, I don't know the ins and outs of the payments in Merge GP, but F1, if you win a championship, you get 100 pound million more or 100 million euros more than the person who finishes last in the championship. Well, how is that make? How is that closing the gap? <laughs> yeah? yeah? So it's the same, you get the same sort of bent bollocks at, with Dorna and Merge GP where they, the politics sets who sits where, yeah? If it was in Dorna's best interest to have a Brit in MotoGP, there'd be a Brit in MotoGP. When was the last one, Cal? Cal Crescio is the last? Uh, Dixon's wildcard. Uh, yeah. Cal before that. Pa Cal before that and Brett, yeah. So it's like, we've got mates who are running Junior Worlds, who've been in Murta 3, and it's, yeah, if, you're, if they don't want, if they don't, think it'll add value to you being in that championship. You, you won't be in it. It's like super licensed kind of stuff. Yep. But aero makes it harder. There is not one, if you are not on a Murta GP grid now, or you, even the jump from Murta 2 to Murta 3 is massive. But then to get into the aero side of it, yeah. I mean, the, Ducat, the V4R, so the BSB bike, when they went from the V2 to the V4 and they had front wings, that was 10 millimeters of preload on the front forks at 100 mile an hour. 10 millimeters of preload. Now to people sat at home, they'll go, well, I haven't got a clue what that means. That meant there was much, that much aero force on the front of the bike, at 100 mile an hour, it compressed the front 10 millimeters. And that's a road bike converted to race. So you imagine now when they've got 10 million pounds worth of aero development behind them, out of a wind tunnel, how much load that is. You look at the new, I think it's a new Aprilia, off the front forks, it's got two wings coming directly up off the axle, and that's so that when you're on the edge of the tire, it's, what are they running now, 65 degrees of lean? 67. The speed, 
the speed is pushing the sidewall down. That's so you haven't even spoken about front loader and the, all these vortices down the side, how they're whipping air up around off the back tire. All the rear wing. You're just talking about two two essentially gurney flaps under the front brake calipers. It's ridiculous, mate. It's getting silly. What's the solution then, bud? Ban aero. Ban aero. Ban aero. Here we go. Come on, NG. You come round here. You, you, none of these are bike fans. You're a bike fan. I'm going to get a bill now. Go on, then. Why do you like it? Go. I like it because you don't like it. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. Then. No, I like it. It's um, form, uh, like Formula One. MotoGP has to be aspirational. It has to look different to the road bike. Admittedly, it does. But there's do you an think it's too of, far? They control it. So it's all... Yes, there's a lot that goes on on the bikes at the moment, but Dorna create a set of regulations which allow them a package to work in. So they're only allowed... The, the wings... If you... If you remove the regulations and the rulings that control the wing packaging, it the, would they'd be, be more massive ridiculous. and yeah, it, yeah, would, yeah. it would be yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd look like, they'd look like the Wright brothers yeah, going yeah. to take off. Yeah. But um, no, I like it. It brings, it brings a different dimension to the racing. It makes the racing look a bit more... It has to look different to the road bike because the average Joe public who watches it needs to watch it on a Sunday and go, that looks nothing like my CBR 600. That looks like unbelievable. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know as well yeah, as I yeah. do, the lap times between a superbike, a world superbike, production-based bike, and a MotoGP is, bike is, is, is huge, yeah. but it's not in comparison to how different the bikes are. No. But um, no, I like it. But, I, I agree. It does ruin the racing in some, because well, as soon as they start getting into, and I believe Dorna are trying to prevent it, when they start getting into creation of dirty air, well, that's, this is... when, that's when it's going to start, because it will then make it almost impossible to overtake. You, you see elements of it in the braking zone where the bike's coming fast, yeah. and then suddenly they realise they haven't got the downforce because there's not enough wing yeah, passing yeah. over the surface yeah. of the aero that they can use the front brakes. We've had a couple of instances Close. of that, but yeah, if it yeah. gets like Formula One where the car behind has to stay 20 foot behind, otherwise it shakes the car, shakes the guy's eyes out with socket, then yeah, it'll have to at change. At the minute, the biggest risk is front tyre tamp, isn't it? Yeah. With, yeah. with following. See, now, World Superbikes has the most open electronics in motorcycling. Yeah. So everybody has to use this, essentially the same package. Similar, or yeah. same, same. BMW use something different, but it's the same number yeah. of channels. Because this was always the argument going back with Honda, wasn't it, when Honda were rubbish? They yeah. run a different ECU spec to everyone else. So yeah. World Superbikes is much more open electronically. I would rather see ride height devices and open electronics over loads of aero because this is yeah. why the Japanese factories are behind. Is yeah. KTM and Ducati are directly linked to Formula One teams. And you, only, you only have to look at the look at Honda and Yamaha. The bikes from the outside point of view and, and listening to people who I know know more about it than I do. The bikes were developed with a chassis and a motor and the aero as a bolt-on. Yeah. If you look at Aprilia, KTM and Ducati, they've it's got an aerodynamicist at yeah. the core of their <laughs> yeah, design yeah, yeah, structure yeah. and go, this is how we can make it aero. Yeah. And they go to the chassis guy and the engine guy, how do you make a bike work with this? Yeah, yeah, fit the and engine you, in we, that. Look at the results. Yeah, yeah. Look You've, at the results. It's well, so much faster. You, you it, Just look at the Aprilia. So the Aprilia has got, obviously, a design package and they've run the way they've done the bodywork down the side of the bike. And then where they're like, ah... Oh, we have to have that there. There's little blisters in the bodywork yeah. to fit over, yeah. over sections. Well, they probably were the first ones to come up with the concept of aerodynamics. If you look at it in a vertical plane of the, the bike going against the wind, yeah. they need to create downforce. When the bike gets on its side, side, which is the variable you don't have in Formula One, they, have, they need to create a vacuum or a ground effect and on the, the side. Yeah, yeah. But then you can't create too much because the bike, when they want to come back out the corner, Doesn't lift. they've got to get out the corner yeah. and it's stuck to the floor and yeah, you just yeah. keep turning. Well, that's you it. Know, it's never going to work. Uh, and but. that was it. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, the, I'm sure it's the April again. It, when it's on its side, it's got wings to create downforce on <laughs> the front wheel when it's now on its side. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. I, it's it'd cool, be, though. It'd You've be got to look at it and go, uh, it looks cool. But like, you look at F1 and you go, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah. racing is shite. Yeah. Max breaks three seconds at the start and then he's like that. All right. But then F1's done. always, F1's never had, simply because of the sheer size of the car, F1's never had the amount of overtakes the GP's had. No. You know, the car's bigger. The motorbikes, most of the overtaking is done under braking in a Formula One car. It is done under braking, but normally it's, they don't shunt them out, but they run them out wide and they have to kind of make a space. Whereas in GP, you've got the it's, aerodynamics are going to take away some of it, but it's not going to become processional that's one in a pit stop. We know as Formula One is. I suppose it'd be the first round would be interesting. Yeah, but the test has been a bit. 
Yeah, but you're like me. You like the tech details. You watch the tests and the test, the, the, the actual results of the test mean nothing. Yeah. But you look at the pictures and go, that looks cool. Yeah. That looks cool. Like KTM, you were talking about the, the front wheel da- downforce yeah. effects. Yeah. They had a wing that stuck on the front of the front splitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you look at it and go, well, they're testing it. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. And there might be some benefit to it. And like you say, they have a big problem with overheating the front tires. So you've got, you've got aerodynamics on one side, front tire Cooling on the other. other. Yeah, yeah. And it's like somewhere in the middle yeah. is the compromise. Aprilia, Aprilia's rear subframe is really intuitive, what they've done there. They've got yeah. a big kicker in front of the wheel that sends it up over the tire. Yeah, like you say, they had to run, it forced them to run that pitot tube matrix yeah, yeah, yeah. to try and get an understanding of, uh, like, there's only so much you can, you can calculate so much on a computer. String, but yeah. yeah, or blow well, a bit of smoke Lu- over Lu- it. Lumo, Lumo fluid, wasn't it? Yeah. But then what also you can't, you can't take an account for is, which is why I was saying about Martin versus Top Rack, is the mushy bit. Yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden you put a different rider in it, your aero package is completely wrong for... Yeah, I mean, you can simulate a guy tucked in on the, on the start finish straight in a, in a wind tunnel, no problem, but they get, every guy's got different corners, have different body positions. Yeah. How much load they've got on acceleration will depend on how far they've got their head forwards or their head up. Yeah. How hard they're braking, whether they're well, rolling on the front. Martin's out en- shoulder down. Yeah, how much engine braking yeah. is calculated into the bike for that corner. So suddenly you go, I've got all this clever aerodynamic data, but you've got, I don't know what percentage of the wind deflection the rider creates, but it's, just, it's not 1% or 5%, it's probably 20 or 25%, and it's massive. You know, how do you calculate for yeah. that? So it's clever people. So I like the, like the intelligence that happens I behind the like scenes. I do like the intelligence, but, but I want to see... But if you take away... Everyone wants to see Rossi Lorenzo last corner at Barcelona, don't they? And we don't yeah, really... Yeah, if you take away all the rider aids, take away all the aero, you're going to end up with... These, these factories that have got massive budgets are going to go... What else can we do? There's going to be something yeah, else, yeah. you know. Someone yeah. suddenly will have a an engine that's got way more torque than in the mid range or something. But you know? this is now the age-old argument of motorsport is an entertainment. Oh yeah, and at it, what it point is. are we not? Are you not entertained? Yeah, there you go. There's a clip. Well, you have there to you look go. at it. You look at Dorna, who do a brilliant job of running MotoGP and World Superbike, but ultimately they they have no. In, they have. Their main interest is not the racing. Their main interest yeah. is selling advertising, so it, yeah, yeah. putting bums on seats yeah, and getting people money. to tune in. Yeah. And it, it's run as a business. And yeah. Formula One is exactly the same. What was the know? closest racing over the last five laps of any race last season in any class in anywhere in the world? What was the closest racing? It's about free, uh, isn't it? Yeah, or no, or top rap Bautista last few laps yeah, of the ref, last yeah, lap yeah, of the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. 21 overtakes over two yeah. laps or something. But, but even free, then, yeah. like how pissing annoying was that that he's yeah. absolutely that bike was never in a straight line in that race that unreal, and he's that, got to yeah. the last corner and that Ducati's driven around That's the outside of him bump. because yeah. Yamaha and not developing the bike in MotoGP like Ducati are, and that's all washing down to Ducati. Yeah. How strong, and everyone goes on about the minimum weight thing and all that, and I do think there should be a minimum combined. Combined. Yeah, like the reason World Superbike. Yeah. yeah. But that was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, and you knew it was coming. As a racing fan, let alone a racer, if I got yeah. driven around the outside of... It must of, be frustrating. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's same at Portimao, top rack, would battle every corner. Anywhere there wasn't a straight, he was a faster rider. And then top, and then Bautista, because he's so right, through his own advantage, he comes out the corner, it's up. Initial crack of the throttle is the drive. If you look at yeah, the speed yeah. traps, he's no faster at top speed. No, no, no. But that it's first how it tap gets out the off throttle, the yeah, turn. it's just gone. And yeah, you, yeah. Can't, you can't race against that. But yeah. Motor Free, like you say, is the best uh, GP racing every weekend. If you want to see some proper entertainment and some elbows out, watch well, you the Motor Free kids. A bunch of Spanish and Italian kids who've got a lot of pride Tenth and a lot of ego. can win on the last lap, they? just can't want to they? batter the yeah, crap yeah. out of each other. But you and can watch. How many times have you seen it where you've gone into the last lap, 10th to 1st is in a train, and you're like, I would not want to be leading into that last lap. Yeah, and you can't they sandbag be. a little bit, so they'll run a little bit wide to let someone through, and you watch it. I, I will sit on the sofa, I'm like, I'm like I can't, can't watch. Can't watch, can't it's watch. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they're like that. Like those, I, I've seen a lot of those motor kids, motor free kids, and they've got that. They want to prove themselves. They want to be the next Mark Marquez. They want to be the next Lorenzo, they, Rossi, whatever, and they... They see this is my only chance to do it. Motor free is cutthroat. If you're not good enough, you get it, you're dumped off. It is, but the difference for me is between motor, three, motor two, motor three versus motor GP is motor two, motor three are much more controlled yeah. in what they're allowed to do, and it gives us tighter racing. Good racing, yeah. Whereas yeah. motor three, motor GP, I understand this is a Formula One kind of thing. 
they're much more open and much more innovation but i think the racing surface yeah well you 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 can't you can't go in you go into a motor gp race and you go probably one of that half yeah, a dozen yeah, are yeah, going to yeah, win but yeah, in reality yeah. it's going to yeah. be it's be Banya, it's martin this year you're going to go it's probably going to be marquez yeah. he's going to be up there uh, but no people look at i mean people aren't stupid they look at him and go he's the best rider on the yeah, grid. Yeah, best yeah. rider yeah, yeah. he's the best rider I, i'm not gonna say the greatest rider of all time because it's no, different that's styles Ro- that's rossi that's rossi obviously but um he's easily the best rider of a generation yeah. he's the only one he changed it he, yeah he's he's the he wasn't the first one to be all yeah. elbows down but he made that style yeah. popular and yeah. he developed that style himself he was the only he's still probably I think, the only rider he's the only one to turn out, it on a rear he goes out in free practice and tucks front five yeah, times yeah. and saves it yeah. so there's none of this I'm on the edge I'm on the edge I've got a no. lot of feel for the tyre I'm on the edge it's like I'm over the edge yeah, so I now yeah. know at this lean angle this speed this brake pressure that is the edge and yeah. that's a but game that's changer it, but that's it right you go you kind of go back to it you go you probably go right Doohan was a changer Rossi changed it yeah Stoner changed it then Marquez is the last one to kind of do it yeah it'll be something Acosta I think Acosta's the next but, but he's now, the it's, now I think with the aero it's not a style thing you're not going to find a rider develop a doctor's dangle no with now the you've of got to find narrow, yeah, isn't it now? because of the yeah. aero you'd say the next person to change it has been top rack yeah but didn't suit with GP bike he's too it's two out of control. He's unbelievable to yeah. watch, and he does things on a bike. I remember when speaking to Scott Redden, when Top Rack was first first on the the Yamaha or the Kawasaki Yamaha, he said that he'd, he'd follow him round, and he said every other rider. This is the the year that Scott went to GP. He said he'd follow on Johnny Ray and go, yeah, he's impressed with what he does. He can see how he does it. It's impressive how he's so minuscule in terms of yeah. his tolerance of hitting yeah. every line he followed top rack go around and go oh, fuck, i can't do that, do that. Yeah, like, yeah how does he make a bike yeah, to do yeah. that he, he, yeah. he said it was genuinely moments where he go it's gonna be a big crash yeah, yeah. and then suddenly the Burp. back end's back on the floor and he said he's made the apex and he's driven out and you're there going like scratching your head going i don't even know i don't even know you do that mate you me know, and it, something brand new me and him were chatting the other day because he messaged me it was just after my birthday and we were chatting and i was like oh how is your brake how's your front brake load compared to yamaha and he's like, oh, they haven't really told me everything about the BMW yet. He goes, but he was pulling 23 bar on that Yamaha. That's a lot of that, isn't 23 it? 23 bar. He can pull 15 yeah. bar of brake pressure at 45 degree lean angle. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I can't pull 15 bar in a straight line. Yeah. And he my, can do I don't it at 45 degree. my fingers degree. even yeah. pull 25 bar. Bend the brake levers. 48 years old now. My hands aren't as strong yeah. as they used to be. Yeah. So, no, he's unreal. I think he's definitely, there's nothing not to like about him. Although he'd be better if he'd had a drink. He doesn't drink, does he? Because he's religion. Yeah. yeah Whereas yeah. I think he, I reckon oh, he'd be a yeah. good laugh at the party. He's a laugh. He's a like the, yeah. he, obviously he's had his R8 built, and then he's bought a he bought a Supra the other day or something, and he's literally in the middle of his the city he lives in, sending me videos of him sideways driving it <laughs> everywhere. He's just loose. As you do, yeah. But never right. mind. Yeah, Aero sucks. There you go. It actually blows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It depends. A diffuser <laughs> sucks and a wing bl- no, and a wing blows. We create a vacuum blows out higher pressure out the back, doesn't it? So anything lower than the the base blows. It's a bit yeah, yeah. But is that's it, that's still sucking though, G. It's the whole blowing and sucking yeah. the dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so does arrow suck or blow? You decide. Put it in the comments below and I'm gonna have tea. So smash the buttons and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>